How's it going, everybody? This is Rob Novacast back with another video. And, well, we are doing another reaction for reaction time. This time focusing on, um, well, Nostalgia Critic. So, really excited to do some more of this. Uh, more of this stuff for you guys. Um, as well as for myself, because honestly, it would be, when it comes to reacting to stuff, or at least to videos, um, yeah, it's always fun. So, this one, um, came out somewhat recently looking at the the initial um as i'm as i'm recording this and uploading it maybe five five days ago so yeah this will be interesting this is cartoon network bumpers so should be a lot of fun um i was gonna put this on let's put that on normal speed see how that works but anyways let's go ahead and uh get right into this so brought to you by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. By the way, I should point out that um, for YouTube, uh, there will be a uh, little like image saying, you know, full video, or I need to change it to unedited video. On Patreon um, for those who are following me on Patreon you guys will get early access to videos like this so um, yeah go check out the patreon um, for a lot of the, the content I'm not even asking anybody to to uh, to pay any money for a lot of it just uh, to an extent if you want to see the content early go check it out early So Is it just it. me? And welcome to a brand new segment. Hold on. Maybe. I don't know. Might be a one-off. So like ADD to something else. It's bumper to bumper. Okay. I was going to say, like, looking at the lighting for the room, is it just me? Or did, did it seem like his, uh, his, his teeth were kind of tinted blue? I'm not, I'm not trying to be an ass or anything. It's just, it's just observation. With streaming becoming more and more popular, there's a lost art to the creative presentation of TV bumpers. Yeah. The intros, outros, station IDs, and just filler material in between commercials that give a channel its identity. Okay. The same way I enjoy commercials, the same way I enjoy the underappreciated work that went into a lot of these. Okay. They were like a testing ground for short, but also new, experimental, and even artistic. Kind of wonder if I should have it, like, yeah. over there. It helped give the channel a uniform, something you'd recognize as uniquely theirs. Okay. It's a dying art, and I want to put some focus on the ones I remember most. That's it. it probably goes By the way, the saying, Yogi Bear, <laughs> Yogi Bear in the um, the forest. That was funny. You would think the identity of a channel called Cartoon Network would be easy to come up with. By the way, I rem when I was a kid, I remember some of these, where they would have little um, little animated skits with some of the characters that were on Cartoon Network, or like for some of their shows. But when there's such a wide range of animated gold, both classic and modern, it can yep. be a little tricky. The team that put them together utilized the sense of humor of its modern cartoons like Powerpuff Girls and Johnny Bravo with hmm. the spirit of its classic cartoons like Flintstones and Tom and Jerry. The result was something that felt adult and new, but also child-friendly and familiar. Okay. I'll admit when Cartoon Network really started taking off, I was probably the wrong age to really be into it, but I did check it out from time to time. Hmm. I liked seeing classic shorts like the Looney Tunes, got into one or two of the newer shows like Dexter's Lab, but I'll be honest, favorite thing about it was the bumpers yeah it's not like today where you can just look them all up on youtube you had to watch the shows get through the commercials and when one finally popped up it kind of felt like you found hidden treasure like a little moment that was made for you and maybe just a select few other people because they really were well put together now keep in mind i'm not gonna be able to cover all the bumpers oh ideas, the intros outros etc <laughs> oh the hey, pussycats one that was funny B, there's just way too I'll go over the ones though that I feel really. Happy. Oh, I got pause because I remember that one. Um, because the Pussycats was a cartoon way back in the day, and 
that one, uh, that bumper was actually a lot of fun to watch because uh, it was because um, to an extent the Pussycats are a uh, a band who are. Or at least, if I remember correctly from the show, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it was an old show where you had um, a band, and at, for whatever reason, would help solve mysteries or fight crime. Um, kind of remind, it kind of reminiscent to another show of teenagers fighting crime. Well, anyways, you have um, you have the three members of the band and in this bumper it's them singing the, the theme song but in different renditions of music and it was so good helped give Cartoon Network the identity we all associate with it today starting with this first one with Droopy introducing the chant Hello. Okay. welcome to the world's first and only Cartoon Network it does show very early on they had an identity of what they want the channel to look like and feel and okay. It's pretty consistent. At last, the Cartoon Network. Home sweet home. Hmm. I'm so happy. The first one I was introduced to, though, was the Wonder Twins. Hi, I'm Zan. Oh, I'm no. Gina, and we're the Wonder Twins. I didn't even know who these characters were. I guess I didn't watch enough Super Friends. But they were a brother and sister duo that could transform. Which the sounds heck? pretty cool, but one could transform into any animal, and the other... Hold on, I got paused. Because for some reason... My thing was acting weird. Hold on. Okay. Of water. Yes, water. I am dead serious. Yeah, I would feel bad. Like, for that. that I, w I would feel like I got jipped. If that was the case, where I had a twin, they could turn into any animal, and I just turned into water. That'd be, that's kind of screwed up. Wonder Twin powers activate. Form of a seagull. Shape of an ice gondola. What? Yeah. I actually thought they made these two up for the bumper because the power was so lame. This couldn't be an actual hero. Yeah. Before you go and try to mutate into an algorithm rhythm tiger or a giant bucket of ice water. But this was totally a thing, and the brother calls him out on it. Yeah. How come I always change into something lame like a wave or a puddle? This isn't the time or the place to get into this. Don't worry, hmm. man. I know someone that can teach us moves. <laughs> <laughs> <At least the> idea. <laughs> it's sad because I know that character and I know how evil she is. Man, that character made things get a lot darker when it came to Avatar. By the way, that's from Avatar. Yeah, funny, but the sister's voice coming out of this tiger is hilarious. Yeah. Man, relax. I could get beaten by a sponge. Wouldn't even have to be an evil sponge. And the fact hmm. that the jander uses the brother to mop the floor. <laughs> oh yeah, that that's that's that's, that, that's messed up. With Shaggy and Droopy driving while saying the dialogue from Pulp Fiction. Really? Spin on it, of course. Know what they call pound puppies in Paris? They don't call them pound puppies. Nah, they don't have pounds in France. They have the metrics. They call them less puppies well. Good huh. God, that is ingenious writing. Seriously, this is like Simpsons and Pixar writing at their peak. And it's okay. just for a minute of screen time, people aren't even scheduling to watch. Think about that. They're watching this on their way to the program they're really tuning in for. Yeah. They have to put this kind of effort into it. Yeah, and in Morocco, Morocco Mole is just called Mole. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's Casey Kasem reprising his role as Shaggy as well. Which works because his voice is older and more mature, and they're giving him dialogue that sounds older and more mature. Yeah. The point where I swear it kind of sounds like Saul Goodman. It's like this. Cartoon Network's the same in those countries as it is here, except for little differences. Shaggy Goodman. <laughs> I know that's got to be Kasem in this sidekick promo, though, where a bunch of animated second bananas meet up to try and convince people of their importance. We may not get the best lines, but we move the story along. Porky Pig had a full-fledged career as a star going, and he really only started doing his best work as a sidekick. That's actually true, too. Yeah. <laughs> Were they, like, really strict on the quality of these promos, or did they just really like making them? We're there to make the stars look better, and that's a responsibility that we don't take lightly. It has a good ending, too, with the um, sidekick of Cow and Chicken showing up. Oh, God. Not him. I ain't supposed to be here. I'm not a sidekick. I'm a co-star. My name isn't 
the title for crying out loud. Yeah, if there's an and in front of your name, you're usually the sidekick. Yeah. Another one that got a lot played that also starts chicken is this parking lot pro. Cartoon Network keeps adding stars without adding parking space. Chicken, Jeff <laughs> Winstow, and this guy I always thought was He-Man, but I guess his name Thundar? Which Thundar, because the Barbarian. We're having trouble finding parking. Reserved for Papa Smurf. And no leader go undated. Okay, Papa Smurf <laughs> needing that larger space already cracks me up. Space <laughs> goes offers his spot, but remembers he flew into one. Silly me. Oh, brother. However, one is spotted just as Scoob Racer spots it. All right, boys, I need your foot power to help me gun it. And this contrast of different cartoon sounds always gets me. What the hell? <laughs> Juicy Jetson crashes into speed, resulting in them never finding a spot. That does it. I'm gonna start tanking the bus away. Are you sure it did eat Dino and didn't leave any bones? Oh, God. <laughs> that joke. Brent shows up in another one where he's denying service at a gas station by a character that I could be wrong, but I guess it probably wouldn't fly today. I can't sell you flip flops. No server. So, you're saying I can't buy shoes because I don't have shoes? And you, blue dog, no pets. He sounds just like my karate instructor. It is funny, though, as he bands together with other cartoons to try and get somewhere. Can I get some service, please, sir? Horseshoes, that's not shoes. These are horseshoes. Oh. Shoes! And you have to have pets. That sign doesn't say pants. We have a naked Fred Flintstone on oh, a God. kids network. <laughs> this is too much right. <laughs> I don't remember that one. By this. Keep in mind, Weasel's head could have been even more suggestively placed. <laughs> well, I gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> I feel like these writers knew if you just take Come on. with strong personalities and put them in random situations, the writing kind of takes care of itself. Oh, man. This bit were a newcomer from Sheep in the Big City. I guess we be a newcomer for long. Yeah. My friends in the cartoon period. I forgot, because that was supposed to be, that was supposed to be like a new show, and I don't think, I don't think it lasted long back in the day. Holy crap. Okay. The gate tune is a thing, I guess. Oh god, I remember that. And now, like, as I'm older, oh shit. We see a bunch of tables with similar types. I always wondered what to make of Fred sitting at the girls' table. Hey, gang! Uh, hey, Fred! I mean, we all know he was borrowing Daphne's scarves. This transition was only a matter of time. What the heck? To be honest, I feel like I could just listen to these characters talk in a cafeteria all day. Their personalities just work so well off each other. Come on, Sheep. You can sit with us. Yes. Go sit with the freaks. <laughs> Sheep is given the loser table. Velma stands up and says they're all freaks in their own unique way, which doesn't go over well. Who you calling freak, freak? <laughs> Come on. Freaks, that looked like it really hurt. Yeah, it did. The bagel from Spider-Verse, man. There should be blood coming out of that nose. Cartoon Network, the best place for cartoons. No, also, That's uh, bad moral for kids about not getting on. Who cares? It's funny. Yeah, but at the same time, Jesus Christ. Poor Velma. Not poor Velma today. Because that show sucked, but regardless. Yeah, poor Velma. Okay. <laughs> Small talk at the office was constant in these. Like this one where Ed talks to Captain Planet, having no idea who he is. Maybe cleverly showing the age gap that I'm sure it's only gotten bigger since this premiered. Who are you? Captain Planet. Who? I... <clears throat> Captain Planet. And this means what? What makes it so great <laughs> is that Captain Planet was the passion project of Ted Turner, the guy who owns yeah. Cartoon Network. So mocking his creation openly kind of feels like a ballsy move. <laughs> that piece of paper can be recycled and used again to make napkins, newspapers, and... Lots of other products even more exciting than napkins and newspapers. Oh. Hey, how about spitballs? I guess it shows Turner does have a good sense of humor. Shame the guy who wrote it had his house blow up a day later. But needless what? to say, this got a good laugh. Hey, would you stop? <laughs> Not surprisingly, superheroes did get a lot of attention. What? Alex Luther is about to drown Aquaman and Wonder Woman in... Soup? They have this back and forth. My ability to talk with fish is of no help, Wonder Woman. Yeah, Aquaman was still the bitch to make fun of. Days. Oh my Jason god. Oh, we'll fix that up for a short amount of time. What? The Powder Puff Girls? It's Powerpuff! No, D! The Powerpuff Girls come 
and to save them, though, resulting in this awkward as hell line. You girls are developing into quite the superheroes. Someday we'll be as developed as you. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Literally just them snickering. <laughs> Wonder Woman even covers her chest. <laughs> you bet the comments were turned off on this one. <laughs> I yeah I remember that oh my god I remember that. like and again it's 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 cool kind of cool that he's doing something like this because this is the kind of shit kind of stuff that I would have seen when I was younger um, especially watching stuff like Cartoon Network oh my gosh that's actually pretty cool even more awkward though okay that's not true I just made a transition but we all remember what a pain scrappy do. Yeah. I exploited that to know it. Use this crap. Oh, you work here? Scrappy! Yeah, for a while now. I've been busting my hump at this network for years! I like the movie, though, that also made fun of Scrappy Doo by having him, um, pee on people. Oh, God, he's peeing on me. Yeah. yeah. A lot of thought went into that. Cartoon yeah, that, that movie sucked. It, you know, funny. The result is Scrappy having a complete mental breakdown as other cartoons are going to work, leaving him on the curb side. I mean, who do you think's been keeping the cartoon mystery? Oh, Shaggy! <laughs> Shaggy backing away, trying not to get noticed, might be the funniest thing in all of these. I've been here longer than you, 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 and you! He just goes more and more insane as people either try to calm him down or avoid him. You are here today, Scrappy? You are a genius! How'd you figure that out? <laughs> Aww. He gets with one of Scrappy's co Oh, I'm not kidding. There's a bumper all about Dexter and Velma dating. What? <laughs> she supposed to be again? Oh my god, I forgot about this. Exactly right. I would be happy to help. It ends with yeah. being distracted by Johnny Bravo, though, who instantly wins her heart. Dinner? Sure, Johnny. Oh. How old is she supposed to be again? Seriously, they're always called kids, but they look and act late 20s. If they're supposed to be kids, how come there's a show where the gimmick is they're kids? They actually expand on Velma and Johnny's romance in another bumper, where Johnny talks about her like she was the love of his life. In a weird way, I do kind of ship it. Took her to our favorite night spot, gazed into those wobbly eyes and said, Velma, marry me, pretty mama. You and that mangy dog. Sorry, force a habit. <laughs> she looked back at me with that freckled face full of love, sighed, and said, I'm sorry, Johnny, but my career comes first. first, first. And besides, if they cancel this guy, you're probably up next. <laughs> True. So he goes from a dog person to a cat person. <laughs> hey there, little mama. The seat taken. So, Fred's a bartender now? Yeah, at least we know he left smoking at the bar. Yeah. No. Yeah. Can car I? 54, car 54, we have a robbery in progress. I might have to skip this. Right. What? Oh, that's about factor. Season, you need wholesome, convenient meals to I'm gonna skip. 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 I need to get started on that game. Probably after I play Tears of the Kingdom. Stones would be the characters these bumpers like to use the most. Yeah. But more likely than not, that honor probably belonged to the Scooby Doo characters. On top of the Scrabby joke, the writers always had a good time mocking the absurdity of the criminals in the show. Oh, God. As as it is to have a bunch of kids <laughs> and their talking dog in a mystery machine. It's even crazier to be foiled by them. Most of them are middle aged men. None of them are very smart. You are getting sleepy. You want a book of what? I'll take a reader's digest. <laughs> What do you think that guy's mugshot looks like? <laughs> the big part, in my opinion, of why a lot of these work is combining the animation with real life. It makes the comedy funny or imagining what it would be like if these characters existed in the real world. Hundreds of escape attempts have been made. None of them ever worked. I love, too, that because these criminals always scream everything, they can't even whisper their escape plan so the guard a mile away can hear them. What we need is some glow-in-the-dark paint. And the film projector! Dry ice. Dry <laughs> ice. You know Shawshank had a couple of these characters. They probably would have won Best Picture. <laughs> I learned that scaring people away from property only drives down the value if I'd only known that 30 years ago. But my parents were carny folk. 
Okay, I legit want to see a movie on this. These backstories are fascinating. <laughs> but nothing topped, arguably, their magnum opus, the Scooby Doo Project. Yes, this oh, came out yeah. when everybody was doing a Blair Witch parody, but when Cartoon Network was doing a Scooby Doo marathon, they pulled out all the stops on these intros and outros. The old school cartoons would play like normal, but in between the commercials, they would run this continuing story of the gang getting lost in the woods and being haunted. Who got these snack crumbs in my sleeping bag? Maybe it's Daphne. Now why would I complain if it was me? These two styles blended so beautifully, it was impossible not to get a ton of laughs out of it. My feet oh my hurt. gosh. Well, oh my gosh. You wore high heels on a hiking trip. At least I try to look feminine. That's that fucked that up. I got watching Scooby Doo reruns as an adult, but I checked in on this just to see these bumpers. And that's Norville Rogers. It's Shaggy. Like nobody calls me normal. Well, no one hmm. likes you. It's amazing how well this plays out, just like a usual Scooby Doo episode, but also a parody of Blair Witch. I yeah. My glasses. Here we go again. Velma, the crying out loud. A glasses strap. How many times have we told you? And we cut them all together. It actually does have a beginning, middle, and end. You may not have even noticed they were supposed to be bumpers if you watch it all as one thing. Zoinks! We're never gonna get out of here. Zoinks! That's all you have to say, Zoinks! Jinkies! I think we're royally zoinks. The whole collection adds up to just a little under twenty minutes. It's crazy the amount of work they. Put into just these oh my gosh. outros to a poorly animated cartoon show that's decades old. It really shows the impact it had on the writers despite it being so low budget. And now, here we are years later watching this similarly low budget production with fond memories. Buzzbuzz Scarf! It's my favorite one! It's so <laughs> brilliant. If you can find a collection of them all spliced together and put in order, do it. It's so worth the search. Did you hear that? Yeah! <laughs> Then little throwaway promos that nobody would remember is something people are still searching for and laughing at literally decades later. Where are you? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cartoon Network would also experiment with music a bit. Every once in a while they would air a short music video. Oh, are they gonna talk about it? Always what you think. Okay, yeah, sometimes they would get someone like Coolio. Okay, that one was exactly what you think. Yeah. Oh, and I guess Will I Am had a song with it too. Meh. Album or something? Okay, y'all don't get to give me shit about this anymore. But they would try some new things. Like there's an edit of Elmer Fudd's laugh put to music, then that's it. It's really odd, but also kind of hypnotic. Yeah. It's kind of hard to turn away from. Yeah. Sometimes the music videos would play on a joke, but also kind of tell a story. One of my favorites is a really catchy song called Circle, sung by Soul Calling. I don't need to walk around in circles. They sing over oh. the title Fred and Barney, trying to figure out why their backgrounds keep repeating, and more importantly, if there's a way out. It's not only funny, but seriously, I legit really love this song. Walk around in circles, walk around in circles, walk around Okay, I, I remember this one. This one was actually good. <gasps> yes, good! They talked about it. <laughs> okay, two thumbs up for that. Josie and the Pussycat, sorry. Well, seriously, this country version is pretty damn scary. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell is that? They still have other bands do songs based on characters like Devo about Mojo Jojo. Go, he go! Go, Jojo, Jojo! Or they might be giants about Courage the Cowardly Dog. Someone protect our home. Who will protect our home? And they were usually pretty good. They didn't feel like sellout cover songs or bands that were just doing it for a paycheck. The styles of these groups often did match the feel of the show and characters. Hmm. So 
I'll admit, as time passed, I did start to focus on other things and didn't pay as much attention to Cartoon Network, but I do remember at one point the bumpers switching to something a bit more consistent. They pretty much made Cartoon Network look like a big city, and you would just see the characters kind of living out their lives in between commercial breaks. Hey guys, groovy ride! Wanna lift? Okay, dude, let's see what that jalopy can do! What's a jalopy? I do like the variety of the yeah. other more, I will admit, this did add a little bit more of a continuum flow. Again, it almost felt like these characters had lives outside the shows we were watching. It made them feel more real. Oops. Sorry about that. They were a bit more laid back, but honestly, <laughs> that was kind of welcome. Like, the characters don't always have to do something big and crazy. They can just live their lives. Yeah. Your tickets? Oh, we don't need tickets. We're Max Imaginary Friends. Well, I can see you. Well, you must have a great imagination. I know it doesn't sound like much, but there was kind of a coziness to it. It's a little change in pace, but I feel like it did work. I seem to have locked myself out of my car. How many geniuses does it take to unlock a car door? Why don't you use some chemical X? <laughs> There's about 10 minutes worth of these. Oh, movies. God. I recommend you check them fun to watch on their own or just have on in the background while you work on something else. Hmm. And after that, I really haven't kept up. Yeah. Like I said, many of us are getting more and more into streaming, so I haven't really been keeping track that closely. But with that said, it is cool that a series of bumpers that were meant to only entertain for a short period of time are not only being remembered years later, but still making us laugh. If you go yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, it's a. I, mean, I think he's pointed out this, especially with streaming. Like this is something like this has become a dying art, um, where people aren't gonna stick around for commercials. They're gonna stick around to the stuff that's extra. They're just gonna want to watch the shows they want. And back in the day when it was just, you know, you know, cable or whatever, whatever, let's say, you know, TV, pro, uh, you know, subscription or programming that you had, uh, whatever channels you were watching, I mean, the, you would either see the ads or see stuff like this, especially for Cartoon Network. And a lot of it was fun. If you go online, you find a lot of these compilations have over a million views. So yeah. it shows their hard work and creativity really did pay off and leave an impact. Okay, I can't say these are epic masterpieces or anything, but for the bare minimum job that most bumpers require, Cartoon Network yeah. certainly went above and beyond and showed they really cared about what they were working on. And no doubt left a gigantic mark on those that watched it every day. I'm just going to say that says a lot about cartoons now, today. Uh, back in the day, there was heart. Not so much now today. Today, and even the casual viewer like me who checked in every once in a while, but still took a great deal from it. Yep. With that said, what were some of your favorite bumpers? Were there ones that came out after the time period I was talking about, or did I miss one that maybe left a big impact on you? And on top of that, would you like to see more of these? Yeah. Do you want to see a special on, say, the Nickelodeon bumpers, or the Disney Channel bumpers, or the MTV bumpers? Know if you're That'd be kind of cool to watch. Others, and we'll see if we can make more in the future. Yeah. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have. Is that it? Someday we'll be as developed as you. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I mean, with all the stuff that he showcased, I mean, yeah, the Josie and the Pussycats one is uh, really fun to watch. Um, I kind of like kind of re-watching some of those it kind of brings back a little bit of nostalgia and it's so it, it just again it, it's cool to like kind of revisit your childhood a little bit and see stuff like that but anyway what's some of the stuff that you like that he showcased uh leave it leave your comments down below as well as uh please like follow like share subscribe all the good stuff um follow our patreon as well as our uh, socials in the description as well as uh, check out our daily content and the weekly podcast. With that being said, this is Robin Novacast signing off. Have a good one. Take care, and I will see you guys next video.